for book one, proposition number 47 of Euclid's Elements, and right angled triangles, the square on the sides subtending the right angle is equal to the squares on the sides containing the right angle. So this proposition is essentially the Pythagorean theorem. So if we were to call each of these sides by a letter, let's say this is A, this is B, and this is C, then what we're trying to prove is that A squared plus B squared equals C squared when you have a right triangle. Now the Greeks, and in particular Euclid, did not think about this theorem or proposition in terms of side lengths, but rather in terms of the squares that you can make on each of these sides. So with that in mind, we're going to prove that if we were to draw a square on this side and add it to the square drawn on this side, then it would be equal to the square drawn on this side. So to start this proof, let's actually construct a square on each side of this triangle which we can do now because of book one, proposition number 46. So we're essentially constructing a square on BC, a square on AC, and a square on AB. So let's construct those quickly. So now that we have our squares drawn, it's much easier to restate what we're trying to prove. Essentially, the proposition says that this square plus this square would equal this square. And this is for only right angled triangles. So what we should do next is to construct a line parallel to the line BD and through this point A. And we can call the point that it ends at point L. And we can do this because of book one proposition number 31. So let's construct this line. And again, it's just parallel to the line BD. And then we also need to connect a few other points with lines. And though I'm not going to write this, we can do this because of postulate number one. So we're connecting A and D and F and C. So from here, it's important to recognize that squares each have four right angles in them. So this angle here is a right angle, but also in this square, this is a right angle. So we can say that angle FBA is equal to angle BDE, and this just comes from the fact that all right angles are equal to each other, which is postulate number four. So with that in mind that these are equal to each other, let's use common notion number two and add this angle here, ABC, to each of them. So when we do that, we now have FBC is equal to ABD. So angle FBC is equal to angle ABD. And so we have these two triangles, FBC and ABD, and they each share this angle here, so that's one for one triangle, and then for the other triangle, it's this angle here, but those are equal to each other. And then also notice that this triangle ABD has this side length, and the triangle FBC also has that side length, but each triangle also has this side length, so that's for FBC and for ABD, that would be here. So it might be hard to see, but in each triangle, we have a side, an angle, and a side. So we can use book one, proposition number four, which basically says that if we have this side, angle, side corresponding between the two triangles, then the two triangles are equal to each other. So let's write that triangle FBC is equal to triangle ABD. Now let's first take a closer look at this triangle FBC. Notice that it shares the same base as this square here, or in other words, this parallelogram, since squares are parallelograms. So it shares the same base and it ends on a line that is in the same parallel as the line where the square ends. 
Namely, they both end on this line GC. And we know because of book one, proposition number 41, that this triangle is exactly half this parallelogram or half this square. Or in other words, the square, which I'll write as GFBA, is equal to twice the triangle FBC. And we're going to use the same logic, but now for the triangle ABD and this rectangle here, and I need to label these points, this we called L and this we can call M. So this rectangle BMLD would be twice the triangle ABD since they share the same base and end on the same line that's parallel to the base. So let's write that that BMLD, the rectangle, is equal to twice the triangle ABD. And since triangle FBC and ABD are equal to each other, then we can essentially substitute this triangle FBC for triangle ABD. So GFBA, this square, is also equal to twice the triangle ABD but twice the triangle ABD is equal to this rectangle BMLD. So we can use common notion number one to basically say that this square GFBA is equal to the rectangle BMLD. So just to recap what we have just proven, we've just shown that this square here is equal to this rectangle here. So we're part way through the proof, but the next part of the proof will essentially just duplicate this exact same argument, but involving this square and this rectangle here. So for this, I'm just going to walk through it without actually writing down every step, since like I said, it's pretty much identical to this. So what we would first do is to connect points A and E, and also B and K. And then showing that since this angle here is right and this angle here is right, that they're equal to each other and you can add this angle here, ACB, to each of them. So then you'd have these two triangles, KBC and ACE, where they share this big angle here in common. So that's for the triangle BKC and for the triangle ACE, it would be this angle here. So they share an angle in common. They also share this side and this side in common. And this long side BC and this long side here, CE, they share these in common as well. So we again have this side angle side for these two triangles. So the two triangles are equal to each other. And then we would just need to prove that since this triangle, KBC, shares a base with this square, and the square and the triangle both end on a line that's parallel to the base, so this triangle is half the square, or the square is twice the triangle, and then now looking at ACE, it shares a base with this rectangle, CMLE, and they both end on the same line that's parallel to the base, so this rectangle here, this is twice this triangle here. So essentially, since these two triangles are equal to each other and they're both half of these respective parallelograms, then that means the parallelograms are equal to each other. Or in other words, this square here is equal to this rectangle here. But we already know that this square here is equal to this rectangle here. So in other words, the two squares add up to essentially this square here on the hypotenuse. And that finishes our proof, so we can end with QED.